Good morning, and welcome to our second nationwide webinar. Today, Alan Stegas, our IC Bus Service Director, and I, Randall Ray, will be talking about maintenance, and we're going to talk through some of our maintenance best practices. We all know that school buses are not trucks. We've done a lot of research along those lines, and we'll be illustrating that today and most important, how the school bus duty cycle impacts maintenance intervals. Last time we introduced our uh, webinar series to this, we have some a lot of important topics we're going to be taking you through. And it's going to range quite wide. As you can see from the listing here, this is our second session, Maintenance Best Practices, highlighting oil drain, DPF maintenance, evacuation and fill or coolant recovery if you prefer. And we're very pleased to bring these to you. We're excited about this. The opening slide said, you know, staying connected through coronavirus is actually something we've been talking about before that came along that just accelerated our plan somewhat to make this available to the world. So we're uh, looking forward to doing this uh, well, well beyond any, uh, any CV-19 uh, uh, necessary items. So as we say, we've been talking about it a while, it just got us uh, moving a little bit faster. Alan, you want to start this off talking about some of our maintenance? Sure. Good morning, everyone. This is Alan Stegish from IC Bus Service. Uh, excited to have you on the call today. As Randy mentioned, this is our second session. And one of the items that we like to talk about is best practices, uh, maintenance, of course. Next slide, please. Why maintenance? Maintenance holds the key to engine operation. Maintenance is done as a preventive measure to help assure proper operating conditions exist. Uh, the operating manuals are based on truck duty cycles of average speed and relatively low idle time. As we know, uh, school buses are not trucks. Maintenance is a three-legged stool. We can be thought of that and, you know, from my past experience, uh, dealer relations and service you know, in a dealership, you would have uh, parts service in sales as a three-legged stool. Uh, we look at our maintenance as, for this, is oil drain, after treatment, and daily checks. Next slide, please. These standard intervals uh, are truck intervals, as you can see. Uh, if you look at the V8 engine, um, particularly EPA, uh, Emissions, uh, 2010, 10,000 miles, 500 hours, six months. Moving over to the uh, DT-466, 15,000 miles, 550 hours, 2,100 gallons of fuel over six months. And as you can see, if you slide over to the right here a little bit on the Cummins ISB 6.7, B6.7, uh, very similar to the uh, DT. 5,000 out of 15,000 miles, 500 hours or six months. Um, after treatment, we will talk a lot about after treatment today. And the reason for this is when we uh, have the opportunity to visit our school districts with our dealers, uh, we find many times that uh, this is not on their list of uh, maintenance. And also it's not a, something that's on their operational sheet to account for financially for the services needed for the after treatment. Um, as long as we have diesel buses, we will have an after treatment system, you know, very similar to where the car industry, the automotive industry, they came out with catalytic converters. And as you know, even on our gas buses, we have catalytic converters. So the after treatment is part of the business. Uh, on the DPF, Typically 200,000 miles, 6,000 hours or 30 months for the, uh, the Max Force engines and on the Cummins 2000 or 200,000 miles and 6,500 hours. These are truck numbers. And when you calculate the, the numbers on this, you'll see that typically uh, these standards are work well with trucks that are out there with an average speed of 30 miles an hour. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> when you do the math, as I mentioned, the uh, 
from truck, you can see that it's typically 28.6, 30 miles per hour, 27, 30, et cetera. But you can see that this is truck. And you look at the Penske operations, the, the large fleets, they spend a lot of time on the highway. They're not picking up kids uh, 40 stops in the morning and 40 stops at night. Not to mention the fact that they may not be special needs applications where you have a high percent of idle. So in the analysis, what's wrong? We don't have trucks, we're bus people. And uh, as I mentioned, typical miles per hour on a bus is 12 to a high of 24 uh, idle times. I've had some, uh, we see buses at 50% and I've actually visited customers that have idle times as, that it's actually in the 70s and they are special needs. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, uh, we have been working with a lot of this data, looking at specific bus customers and trying to understand their vocations. And as you can see, uh, we, here's three uh, analysis that we have done uh, and all three are a little bit different. Uh, when you look at their percent of idle and when you look at their uh, miles per hour, you can see some differences and this is kind of a busy slide. So let's go to the next slide, Randy, please. So the first study, customer 14.7 miles per hour is their average speed, 44%, 44.6% idle. Study number two, I know this customer pretty well. They're, got a, they're in the rolling hills, they're in the country uh, contractor and his average speed is 25.4. His idles uh, at 23.7%. Study number three, 15.6 miles per hour is their average speed with an idle time of 37.6. And if you, if you use the math here, you can see that uh, as an example, when we talk about looking at uh, our standard for oil changes on V8 is 500 hours. Take 500 hours times 14.7. Recommended oil change intervals at 7,350 7, miles. Um, as such, maintenance items must be adjusted to, accom to accommodate the reality that we talk about here. They're not trucks, they're buses. Uh, our recommendation is to look at uh, every six months on oil changes and DPFs every 30 months. And we say this because of the, the numbers here we're looking at, uh, typical bus, 15 miles an hour. Next slide, please. So DPF cleaning, uh, the DPF is a filter. As a filter, it has limits. It must be baked and maintained. Uh, there is several uh, cleaning type machines. The SFX is an approved cleaning machine. Um, excess idle will impact the life of the filter. Limit idle time if you can. Uh, the industry has said this for a long time, but there's no upside to excessive idle. Um, idle saves fuel. Idle could be mandated in some areas. And remember, uh, as Randy mentioned here, remember diesel slobber. But one thing is, uh, I typically tell customers, fleets, dealers, uh, the DPF, kind of like your cell phone. Uh, first year, you're good. Second year, you're charging it more often. At about the fourth year, the battery in your cell phone, uh, you know, it's every 15, 20 minutes, you're plugging in and recharging. And that's kind of like the regen cycles. I've done a lot of history with uh, severe service application vehicles and you look at them early in life and it may be 70 miles between regens and then as that DPF gets plugged, even though it's been regenning, uh, you certainly can't get all the soot out of it, the ash. Uh, you, sip, you typically see these miles between regens get lower and lower and lower. So they need to be clean. Next slide. Okay. So one thing that we've done is we've obviously 
gone beyond just our fleets and looking into the industry. And the item on the left is from the Cummins Best Practices DPF uh, maintenance, and it states a good idle time is less than 20%. As you saw in some of the studies, uh, everything was over 20%, somewhere in the 40s, and we've actually, as we've seen in the 70s. Over on the right, using a trucking example, CCJ talks about Penske taking their DPF maintenance actually in-house, that there was such an opportunity for improving maintenance that they brought this inside of their own operations and realizing and reiterating that it is a filter. It is a filter that must be maintained. Um, an emergency DPF R&R is going to be expensive. It probably is already damaged. If it's getting to be an emergency and hasn't been on a regular policy, it's probably in pretty bad shape. Uh, in the CCJ article, they talk about a three-step process that Penske uses. First, it gets a pneumatic cleaning. If it's 85, if it comes back 85% efficient, it passes, goes back on the vehicle. That doesn't happen. It goes to baking. When it's reevaluated again, it goes back on the vehicle if 85% efficient. If it still fails, then it gets the aqueous solution and a bake process. But they've actually set up centers just to maintain their DPFs. The other item that, uh, is, as we saw back on the three-legged stool that Alan mentioned, is coolant. Then the coolant recovery tool, again, another item that has become an industry standard is, is coolant recovery and its impact on potentially an EGR cooler if it gets low. Coolant recovery or evacuation and fill it's to prevent the air pockets within the system. Those air pockets, if left for an excessive time or even a relatively short time, depending, it can, it can create an air pocket that makes a hot spot that pops an EGR cooler. Now all of a sudden it's leaking and you run the risk of having a progressive situation where that coolant can get all the way through to the DPF. It gets through to the DPF, now we're not gonna have any efficient regen and it backs up the whole system. Now you're sending bad signals for regen, regening too often, regening not efficiently, which is gonna demand another regen. Also, it's, it is simply a process improvement. Kind of look at the center of the slide there. No spills, no coolant contamination, and a time improvement device. So all these steps within the shop can be improved. And can it be, there's many, many variations of this, from aftermarket machines to OEM level machines. In round figures, one EGR core is gonna pay for that. So whether it's one EGR core on a bus, or it's one EGR core a year, or it's just one EGR core per bus per year, the savings can be pretty high. And of course, more importantly, you're gonna get that uptime and you're gonna get the life out of the DPF. So this is a schedule from Cummins that uh, has provided us. And if you look at the kind of the top there, I know it's a little busy. You see miles times 1,000. And they've, this is for a severe duty cycle. Again, 7,000 miles, taking that times the 500 hours, gets 14 miles an hour. So they're recognizing that these different duty cycles require different maintenance intervals as well. Again, you tie that into what the what the idle time is, and it reinforces that need to shorten intervals beyond um, beyond what the truck group might be telling you. This is another side. In fact, uh, they are the ones that brought to us the, the mathematical methodology here. If you look down in the lower left of the slide, you can see the mathematical model that Alan illustrated here earlier, just taking that average miles per hour times the hours of the maintenance interval equaling uh, a drain or a change or a maintenance interval. So again, this is really what's coming from. We're adding this, in, this industry information to try to make it obviously not just international centric, but any after treatment equipped um, engine vehicle can, uh, uh, can benefit from this. So we've illustrated some of the potentially new ways to evaluate maintenance and duty cycles. The daily inspection response is, is all about the coolant, really. If your coolant level is dropping, what is the 
what is the action that comes from that? Is it a top off or is it going to be an analysis if it's if it's a chronic situation? Um, that's really going to yeah, that's really going to tell you or prevent that progressive damage from from theoretically occurring. EGR and after treatment is our new normal in technology, and we really should should and could be creating our own new normal for maintenance. These vehicles are after treatment is here to stay, and it's going to be even more important as time goes on as vehicles get cleaner and cleaner. The good news is everything that you saw there, those details charts that. Alan went through, all that information is available on a health report. So all that information is readily available, pull it up, take a look. Hmm. Yeah, and some of them will even calculate the, uh, the, um, the percentages for you. But all that information is readily available on each and every vehicle. So that's our maintenance. Alan, what else do you want to tell us about today? Yes, any, uh, any questions? Anyone have any questions? All right. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, okay. With all these sessions that we have been doing, one of the things that we'd always want to do is if there's any information out there, additional information. Uh, as you can see here, we've got an after uh, treatment resource center that's uh, an I know article uh, that's available through the service portal. Also, uh, about after treatments, don't take our word for it. Uh, there's a lot of third party information here that you can go on and uh, understand uh, the need for after treatment uh, to be part of your preventive maintenance. So we've got these uh, web links here available. Good articles, uh, good articles to carry to your customers, good articles for the customer to pull down and uh, certainly present to their teams and their uh, or operations uh, people. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, we thought we would add uh, one of the comments is we try to get better with our program. Uh, this is the second of our sessions. Uh, in two weeks, we will have Cummins will be on the, on board for their session, and they will talk about their updates and also. Uh, information uh, for them to present to our dealers and to our customers. So for us to get better, we will receive a, a survey monkey, fill that out and uh, to give us your comments. If there's something that uh, additional topics that you may want us to uh, review or uh, put a program together, please do. We're here to take care of our customers, our dealers, and uh, more information we get, uh, the comments, good and bad, uh, make us much better. So thank you very much for this time. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, have you on the call in two weeks. Any questions there? Anything coming in? I can't see them. I don't see any yet. OK. Well, good. These will be posted. Um, Check your ICU bus website. The uh, it does take a couple of days for it to get uh, to go through the process to get loaded, to get downloaded, um, edited, and and uploaded. So it'll be a couple of days, but it will be available for anybody that wants to uh, have their own copy of it, and it's readily available. So thank you again. We appreciate everyone's time, and uh, good luck. Stay safe. See you soon.